Another building comes down at the Dunray Nuclear Reactor Research Site, taking the total to over 100 since decommissioning began in 2000. The Plutonium Criticality Laboratory, codenamed D8550, was once considered the dirtiest building on site. It was one of two experimental laboratories built at Dunry in the 50s. They were not part of the original plan of buildings erected at Dunry, but were built to address a need which emerged during the Cold War, when America refused to share its nuclear technology with its allies. The British government ordered the building of the criticality laboratories at Dunry to carry out important research on uranium and plutonium, which benefited the UK's emerging nuclear industry. And the laboratories were the site of the first nuclear reaction to take place in Scotland in August 1957. D8550 housed a heavily shielded criticality cell, 7 metres high by 8 metres wide, in which experiments were carried out on solid and liquid-bearing plutonium. The cell housed the two plutonium experimental rigs known as Puma and Panther. When the research programme ended in 1963, a partial clean-up took place before the laboratory was sealed up and left in a cold and dark state. In 1999, following the decision to close down Dunray, one of the experimental facilities identified for early decommissioning was the D8550 criticality complex. It was still heavily contaminated, so workers who entered the building to begin dismantling the test rigs and clean up the contamination had to wear full airline suits to protect them from the radioactivity and any airborne contamination. An enormous amount of work was needed to clean out the criticality cell. The internal stainless steel liner was initially decontaminated using a technique widely used in the aviation industry known as sponge jetting. This stripped off most of the surface contamination from the metal. The large and extremely heavy airtight cell door and frame was decontaminated and removed to enable the remaining Puma rig to be dismantled, cleaned, cut up and packaged as waste. The 13mm thick steel pressure vessel liner was cut up using handheld oxygas cutting torches. Workers wore heavy leather protection over their airline suits to protect them from the heat of the cutting work. Finally, the remaining areas of the complex were systematically decontaminated and decommissioned room by room. In 2008, the whole building was declared safe from the hazard of plutonium and it became possible to walk through it without respiratory protection. It's a great achievement for the decommissioning team and the senior project manager responsible, Charlie Fowler. This, a very challenging project, has removed a rapidly deteriorating alpha-contaminated nuclear liability from the Dunray site. It's also saved the taxpayer the ongoing safe maintenance costs of the D8550 complex. We've carried out very extensive labour-intensive works in radiologically active areas for over eight years and we've done it safely. Our project team have been involved in heavy industrial demolition work in difficult conditions inside the building but with no major incidents or injuries. For example, since 2000 the team have carried out some 25,000 individual entries to these active areas wearing respirators or airline suits. During the same period, over 130 cubic metres of low level waste was size reduced, packaged and safely consigned to waste storage. This achievement is also a demonstration of excellent teamwork, the culmination of many different organisations, both on and off the site, working together. In the autumn of 2008, the building was declassified and handed over to the site's demolition experts. By the spring of 2009, nothing remained of the facility but an empty concrete slab. There were suggestions in the past that a building like D8550 could never be decontaminated. This decommissioning project team has shown that even the most radiologically contaminated areas can now be decommissioned safely and efficiently.